Hello, and welcome to History in 7 Facts, the history side of this channel. Check out this playlist to watch the entire series, and please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Using electricity to create light is often the milestone we think about that gave birth to our modern world. And we all know today that Thomas Edison was the one who invented the light bulb. But in reality, the story of who invented the electric light is a lot more complicated. After the end of the American Civil War in 1865, the United States had entered a new age, one of commerce and innovation. Countless businessmen made fortunes by selling the latest household gadgets. But although electricity had been proven to be a reliable source of energy, electric lighting was still lagging behind. So by the end of the 1870s, there was a race for inventing a stable device that emits light when powered on. Two of the leading inventors in this race were Thomas Edison and Hiram Maxim. Edison was already famous throughout the country for inventing the phonograph and improving telegraphic machines. But he was also a ruthless businessman. He knew how to sell himself and his ideas, and thanks to his experience in the field, he knew all the cracks and weak spots of patent laws. So he always patented any small breakthrough of his team and made a habit out of developing inventions that weren't personally his. His tactics worked, and he was a famous and very successful businessman right up until his death in 1931. Hiram Maxim was a completely different type of man. He was a classic inventor, an opener of roads, who didn't pay too much attention to the money side of things until his inventions were fully completed. Before he was 30, he already invented the automatic fire sprinkler, but was unable to sell his invention, although when the patent expired, the idea was used. In 1878, he worked for the American Electric Light Society, and within a year, Maxim developed and installed the first electric lights in a New York City building. So then, why isn't Maxim credited as the inventor of electric light? The lights used in the Equitable Life Building in New York were a bit different from what we're used to today. Those used electric arcs. Maxim wasn't the inventor, but he did improve the design. Here's roughly how it works. Electricity is introduced in a carbon rod, and when enough charge is built up, an electric arc would jump to another nearby rod. The spark is what emitted the light. By maintaining a stable charge, the rods would spark continuously. But of course, this wasn't an ideal solution and both Maxim and Edison were searching for a way to pass electricity through a filament that wouldn't burn immediately. Edison previously saw demonstrations of electric arc lamps and publicly declared his intention to create an incandescent light. Platinum was a candidate material to be used as the filament, but it was too expensive and didn't last for long before it melted. But Edison had great plans, and he hired a dedicated team, including his own glass blowers. But even so, Hiram Maxim was already ahead of him. By 1878, he created a functional electric light bulb by using a coal filament placed in a glass bulb that was filled with petrol vapors. It worked, and the filament wasn't burning up fast. On October 4th that year, he filled the paperwork to patent his new invention. And if he would've received his patent, he probably would be known today as the inventor of the light bulb. But his battle to obtain the rights to his invention was going to be long and unsuccessful. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you something. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here, or find the link in the description. Now let's move on to the next fact. Why was it so hard to create the modern light bulb? If you ever looked at a light bulb, you surely noticed the very thin filament contained inside. It's through that filament that electricity flows. The material's resistance rapidly increases the temperature, and things that emit heat also emit light. But most materials only emit invisible infrared light. They have to get really hot in order to emit visible light. And this was the problem. This principle was already known in 1870, but putting it into practice was a different story. 
Only platinum and carbon were the only known materials that could withstand such high temperatures. Platinum wasn't very ideal and it's a very expensive material. Coal filaments on the other hand had a major flaw. Their thickness differed and once they were heated up, the thin parts of the filament would burn up quickly. Maxim's genius idea was to put petrol in the glass container. When heated up, hydrocarbon vapors would form that deposited more carbon on the filament, thus filling in the gaps. Essentially, the light bulb would self-repair itself every time it was turned on. Maxim's light bulb was on its way to being patented when one of his former employees intervened. Discreetly calling him Mr. D, in reality William Edward Sawyer, Maxim previously fired him for coming into work drunk. Now, Mr. D contested Hiram's patent request, claiming that he was the real inventor of this new light bulb. He brought in his father and brother as witnesses and claimed that he invented the thing years ago and Hiram stole it from him. Incredibly, his objection was admitted and this Mr. D was given the patent. He now stated that this light bulb is in fact too dangerous due to petrol vapors which hindered Maxim's further development of the product. Just as everything seemed to be lost, help arrived from the most unexpected person, Thomas Edison. Edison contested Mr. D's patent, managed to prove that Maxim was the true inventor and eventually obtained the annulment of the decision. But this apparent help was in fact the last blow to Maxim's struggle. According to patent laws of the time, if a patent was obtained by someone fraudulently, that patent would become public property. Now Maxim couldn't be the owner of his invention, was deprived of massive amounts of money and Edison could now use Maxim's design to create his own version without the obligation to credit someone else. Remember I said Edison was good at selling himself? Well, he was. By the time all this happened, the entire country knew about Edison's work on the light bulb and everyone was awaiting the result. He often made senseless claims like that he solved the problem of electric light subdivision, which doesn't really make any sense, but it did associate his name with light bulbs and progress. Maxim continued his work on creating a stable light bulb, but when he would demonstrate his inventions, most people were asking him if it was one of Edison's bulbs. Edison's final design was strikingly similar to Maxim's, with one major difference. The oxygen was sucked out of the bulb, which prevented the filament from burning up without the need of petrol. Every single light bulb had a sticker with Edison's name on it, so the thing became forever associated with his name. He also bought entire stocks of materials needed to produce the filaments, thus eliminating any rival companies. It was Edison's light bulbs that now filled the streets and homes of the country, which is why today we know him as the sole inventor of electric light. In the end, Maxim gave up on trying to sell his own version of light bulbs, but he continued to invent. One of his inventions though would bring him fortune, but it also brought a lot of deaths. In 1882, at an electric congress in Vienna, he met an American friend who told him to hang his chemistry and electricity and invent something that will enable those European smugs to cut each other's throats more easily. And that's exactly what he did. He took a Winchester rifle and drastically altered the reloading system. In less than a year, he had a very efficient, very deadly and very mobile machine gun. The Maxim gun could release 500 rounds per minute and was much lighter than the already existing Gatling machine gun. This new gun was frighteningly effective. When it was first used in a battle in the British colony of Rhodesia, just 700 soldiers managed to kill 5000 attackers with just 5 guns. This gun was one of the primary weapons used to rapidly colonize Africa in the 19th century. And most of the now famous machine guns from World War I were adaptations of the Maxim gun. Maxim patented over 170 inventions during his lifetime, but the Maxim gun was the most successful and Hiram became known as the engineer of death. But who knows how things would have turned out if he would have been allowed the patent of his electric light bulb. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. 
If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.